Hello quilters. Today's show is all about more steps on the AQS AccuQuilt Quilt Along for Stars in the Crown. Stay tuned to see what we're doing today. I'm Erica Botker, AccuQuilt's creativity expert, and today I'm joined by the one and only Miss Katie Hackney, AccuQuilt's operations manager. Hello, Miss Katie. Hello. Happy Welcome to be here. back. Thanks. It's great to be here. Well, this is part two of the 2023 AQS and AccuQuilt Quilt Along series, Stars in the Crown Throw Quilt. Now, Katie's joining me today because both Miss Pam and Miss Emily are down in Daytona, Florida for the AQS show there. So if you're in the area, be sure and stop by and see them there. And Pam right now is supposed to be in the lounge streaming the show live. Well, Katie, I am so happy to have you jumping in and helping me. She had to brave possibly nasty weather on her way home to get yes. here. Yes, just a little bit. And hopefully it holds off till I have to get home, but I'm glad to be here. Usually I'm moderating comments, so it's nice to be in front of the camera this time. We like to have her here in the <laughs> studio. It's fun. It's fun. So it is going to be a great episode. Quilters, we are going to have live question and answer all throughout the show. So be sure to post any questions that you've got along the way. Katie and I will be answering them for you. That's right. And just Put them in the comment section wherever you stream the show. So we are so excited to be partnering with AQS for this Quilt Along. Quilters, in case you missed it, the last show that we did for this Quilt Along series last week was part one. And there we went over making two parts for the show, Flying Geese and Square on Point. We also had an introduction show where we discussed all the supplies, the pattern, and the fabrics. It's beneficial to you to watch those shows in order before you start your project, so be sure to check it out on AccuQuilt's video gallery on Facebook or on their YouTube page because it's a big part of the fun is doing all of this together. So Katie, can you tell everybody how they can share? Yes, if you're sharing on social media such as Instagram, make sure you use the hashtag AQSOs. And if you are part of Facebook, make sure you join the Facebook group uh, called AQS Quilting Project Parade. That's right. We have seen so many great pictures. We have just really enjoyed chatting with everybody in that group. Pam and I are both on that group. Uh, you'll find me as AccuQuilt Erica and Pam as AccuQuilt Educator Pam Heller. So if you are not already a member, be sure you join that group because it's really fun. So here is a look, we'll get started, we're just chit-chatting. Here's a look at the flying geese that we made last week. I've got a whole stack of them. No, I didn't put all of my box together as tempting as it was. And here is one of the square on point units. So this is what we worked on last week. And Katie, you were here with me for last week too, weren't you? Yes, I was. So these are really, really commonly used units in quilting. So it was a great experience for everybody. Now this week, we're gonna cut the squares that we need so that we can put our blocks together and have our main star blocks, just like this. Now we're also gonna use our setting triangle die to cut and sew the quarter square units that are gonna surround the center block. Now, if you aren't using the GO system for your project, you will find rotary cutting directions in the very first blog post about the quilt along, both on the AccuQuilt and the AQS blogs. Ours was on February 1st, theirs was on January 30th. Now, Pam and I for this project are both using the GO Cube Mix and Match 8 inch finish block and the GO setting triangles that finish at 8 inches for our projects. But there are seven sizes of Go Cubes and there are seven sizes of setting triangles to go with them. So you can use whichever size you want. Now the rotary directions are built around making the same size that Pam and I will have when we're done using our eight inch cube. So today's really gonna be fun because we're gonna be able to finish our blocks so they look just like this fun one in front of us 
And so we didn't forget about her. I've got one of Miss Pam's blocks here as well, so we can see what hers are gonna look like. So here are the two blocks. Before we get started, do we have any questions yet, Katie? Actually, we do. Okay. So Pat S. wants to know, she's having some trouble matching up her points, and if you have any tips for this. Um, well, one would always be pins. If you're having trouble matching, keeping your pieces in place, those dog-eared corners, if you're using the go, I guess we should have asked if she was rotary cutting or yeah. not. Pat, if you are rotary cutting or if you're using your dies, pinning might help you to keep everything in place, um, especially if you're working with the bigger pieces, maybe the 12 inch size. Um, otherwise, the dog ear corners are really gonna be your friend. Just, you wanna just take your time to get those lined up when you're going to the, to the sewing machine. Check your quarter inch seam allowance. And third thing, check your pressing. Oh, speaking of pressing, I'm gonna turn on my iron real quick. Anything else, Katie? Um, Rochelle had a question about how to lay the fabric on the setting triangle, so we're, we'll address that a little bit later. Oh, we will. We will indeed. We'll have lots of we'll have lots of time for setting triangles. We're going to work with the corner setting triangles today. Next week, we're actually going to be working with those side setting triangles. But you know, Katie, we've got an energetic group on this on this quilt along because some of you all are already finishing your quilts. I can't believe it. Yes, I've seen some of those. I'm on the. Facebook group as well and watching them on there too. See, Katie's on there too. If you're not on that Facebook group, you need to join. Well, the last shape that we need to finish off our blocks that we've got right here. Oh, I didn't tell Greg I was going to do this and I just held it up. He'll yell at me afterwards. There's our block. Are these corner squares? Okay, so we're going to go back to our cube for that. So this is going to be shape number two, it's the small square from our eight inch cube. It's going to cut at two and a half inches and finish at two inches. Let me get this, well, I guess I don't have to put it back in. And we'll of course need a mat. Let me grab that as well out of this cute little folder. All right. We need our space. I'm gonna move these out of the way, Katie. While I'm moving, do we have any other questions yet? Yes, Ann W wants to know if you have any tips for fussy cutting. She has a princess with no heads. Oh dear, yes. And you know what? Somebody did a really great job, I'm thinking it was Jeffrey, on the Facebook page with fussy cutting. And fussy cutting, if you're not familiar with it, it's a technique of kind of centering a design within a square. So let me grab shape number one. It'll be easier to show you on a bigger. So if we had a princess whose head we wanted to center in here, there's a couple of different ways to do it. One way is that you can, uh, remember this is your die and there's no die police. So take your uh, acrylic ruler Take a permanent marker and measure your shape. So this one I know is a four and a half inch cut square. So half of that would be two and a quarter. And you can take that, lay it right along the blade here and just take your marker and draw a line. Do the same thing this way so that you've got your center point. Then you can take your fabric and fold it so that it's going to, uh, in quarters with the center being at that tip like you're making a snowflake, a paper snowflake, and use those lines to line it up and unfold it onto your fabric. That would be a really easy way to do it. Um, we've had some videos and they're gonna live on our, our other pages with some other techniques as well. You can use like clear acrylic, the real thin sheets of acrylic to cut out like a window and use that to line up your fabric as well and then use some painter's tape on it. And you might want to do that too once you get yours lined up. Use a little painter's tape on either side just to keep your fabric so you know you don't have any shift because we don't want the princess losing her head on her way through the cutter. That would be no good at all. 
It would traumatize small children. Does that, hopefully that answers the fussy cutting question. But that is a great question. And I was really impressed because somebody did have um, Anna from Frozen uh, centered in the square. Yes, I saw that one too. It was very cute. Yes. It was very cute. Okay, so back to, back to work here. So we're working with the eight inch cube again and shape number two happens to have four shapes on the die. So it's really hard to see those blades, but trust me, they're in there. So this is gonna be super quick to cut. Now I measured from side to side, we've talked about this before. If you lay your ruler on and you want a quarter inch on either side, and that would put us at five and a half inches. So I have already rough cut a five and a half inch with the fabric strip. No, it's not a full width of fabric strip. I've actually cut on it a little bit, but I'm gonna cut some more so that we can cut our squares. Now squares aren't directional, so this is a great time for fan folding. And I'm just gonna get my fabric kind of lined up here. And if I was to ask out loud, how many layers of fabric I can cut at a time, everyone in the studio would yell back six at me. So there's my two. Now, if you're not familiar with our dies, you're gonna see that this is a little bit off at an angle, and that's on purpose. I'm gonna follow that same angle with my fabric so that my lengthwise grain is going lengthwise through the cutter. And now I can fan fold my six layers. Just there's four. There's my two more. Put my mat over the top. Now I am using a Go Big electric cutter today on the set, but this die would fit through any of our cutters, including a Go Me. So later when I switch to the Go setting triangles with the eight inch, it actually would need to be a go or a go big. But if you're making a four or five or even a six inch size, you can make this whole project with a go me. Okay, let's put this one through. Oh, well, it didn't like something there. All right. There we go. Well, luckily I have some cut. It must not like some of my layers on this. But that's a great thing. Did you know that, Katie? If you, if there's something wrong or if it senses too many layers, it'll back your die out of the cutter for you. So I have plenty of squares here to use. So, oh, it cut all the way through. We're good. All right, fabulous. All right, we're gonna put this aside. I've got, oh, just a couple more. And little scraps. It's good grunge, I'm keeping them. Okay, we'll move our iron over. I'm gonna use our board to lay out my block. So we're gonna take the units that you made last time, remember? And we're gonna start in the center with our square and a square or our square on point unit we made. And then we've got our flying geese units that go around it. And then our squares that we just cut and be sure you've got your fabric facing the right direction. Grunge has that print on it, remember, and I have to be careful. I've been known to have to re-sew areas. So there so we Erica, go. Erica, to that point, Krista, Christina is wondering is if it's possible to use a directional print for the centers of the square. You know, it is. You absolutely can, especially for this small piece because you only needed nine of these pieces. Now remember, this block is going to be set on point when you put it in your project. So that means you really can easily 
fit that in with directional fabric, it would actually be really super easy to do with that center square. That's a great question. We've got creative quilters watching this show. So these squares, again, are gonna are cut at two and a half by two and a half. That means they're gonna finish at two. So if you're doing rotary cutting for this project, you'll need to use your rotary cutting and cutter and rulers, cut two and a half inch strips, then go back and subcut them into the two and a half by two and a half inch squares. And don't forget, Katie's here, so put your comments or your questions in the comment section wherever you're streaming the show, and Katie and I can get you answers. Okay, so we've got these laid out, and now we're gonna be ready to sew. So I am gonna sew my three rows, the pieces together, and while I get started doing that, we're gonna check with Katie to see what all you are asking. Okay, so Sandra B wants to know, she's cutting with the rotary cutting instructions, but okay. she hasn't found the written stitching instructions. You know, for the written stitching instructions, just go ahead and download the free pattern for the eight inch version from AccuQuilt.com. Because they're, it's gonna, everything will go together pretty much the same way for you. Okay, now I'm gonna show you a real little tip. Greg, this is our tricky moment. I'll show you over here. When I sew flying geese onto things, I like to sew them so that the flying geese are on top. The reason is I can see where that goose's nose is, where that tip is, right there, right? right up here, and I can make sure while this is going under my needle that I am not gonna cut off that tip. So let's see how I do that. While you're sewing, Erica, Josie B wants to know why are the shapes angled and not straight on the die? Oh, okay, that is a great question. That is an age old question about AccuQuilt. So we put them on there so that you get your best possible cut. And what we mean by that is so that your fabric has a nice smooth ride and you get your best cut. Now, to, to give you, I'm not an engineer, but the best I can do to explain it to you is to say, have you ever driven over a speed bump? Going through the cutter is gonna be like sending your fabric over a speed bump. And we want it to have a nice smooth ride so that it's picture perfect. So we're gonna send it essentially by putting it on an angle one tire at a time over that speed bump. So rather than hitting it and jarring it and kind of going like this, when you hit it head on, we're gonna go over at an angle so that it's a smoother ride. That's a great question. And Erica, Nina wants to know, what is the best way to clean the wool ironing mat? Oh, um, a lint roller. I would just clean it with a lint roller. Um, you don't wanna get those wet, right? You don't really wanna get them wet. They're gonna smell like a wet dog, or rather a wet sheep. Um, they really are wool. So if the threads on there bother you, just a plain, any kind of, lint roller, I have them all over the house because my dog sheds like crazy. So I, I get them in bulk and just have them all over the house. And that's what I use here. I also use it on my design wall. Okay, I'm gonna, I've got these two ready to go. I'm gonna go ahead and keep chain piecing and get this third piece on before I go to pressing. So Katie, any other questions for us? Yes. What stitch length are you using? Oh gosh, somebody always asks that. And you know what, I'm terrible. I don't ever pay attention to my stitch length and I never change it. So. I it know when I use mine, it's usually two and a half, yeah. three. Yeah, I've got two numbers on here. I think it's a two and a half. Um, it's gonna depend maybe on your sewing machine. Get what's happy for you. You don't want a wider, you don't want a real wide stitch because you don't want it to be like a basting stitch because you don't want your quilt to come undone. But you don't have to have it really super tiny tight like you would if you were doing foundation paper piecing either. That's, I'm 
surprised, uh, we get that question a lot, I and I just don't pay that much attention. Isn't that awful? I, I'm gonna have to check my machine at home. Okay, I've got one more square to sew on, so time for one more question while I get this done, and then we'll press. Rochelle wants to know if you have any tips or tricks for fabric selection. Oh, I do. Actually, I do. You know, fabric selection can be really intimidating. Okay, it it can be really. And Katie's nodding. Have you you've had that you've had that experience? I it struggle be, all the time when it comes to picking. It can fabric. be really overwhelming. And when I first started quilting, I was so meticulous about my fabric selection. Oh my gosh, it could take me months to pick out to find what I was happy with for a project. I don't know if you've had that experience yet or not, Katie, but it was ridiculous. So. One of my tricks is, oh gosh, I don't have a really good print here, but I grabbed, let me grab my fabrics that I've got over here. So one of my favorite tips for quilters, especially if you're struggling, is that along the selvage edge of your fabric, you're going to have little registration marks. And people, designers have gotten really um, clever. It's really hard to see. But there are spots, there are circles, there are spots or shapes here. They're like little daisies that show the different shades of yellow that are in this fabric. So if I had Pam's fabric that has the ladybugs in it, it would have more and it would probably be easier for you to see than this one. Let's see if the blue is easier to see. She said, tossing her fabric to the side. Okay, here, this is maybe a little easier to see with the blue. You can see the different shades of blue. Then that means that if you find something that matches one of these, the color is gonna match your fabric. Now, another tip is that you want to have, I like to have light, medium, and dark shades, usually, and a variety of them, and if you struggle with that, a great thing to do is to lay out your possible fabrics and take a picture of it with your phone. You can look at it, sometimes seeing it on the picture on your phone, it's gonna look different to you than it does just looking at it. But the most helpful thing to do is to switch that picture on your phone then to black and white. And you will see your light, medium, and dark much easier then because you're not gonna be distracted by the color, you're just gonna have the, the shading. So that's another great tip. And I guess my last one would be to think of the size of pieces that you're working with versus the size of print that you're working with. So if we look at the ones that I'm using, I've got pretty small, relatively small pieces. And this is a smallish print, and this is a smallish print. And then I've got basically, you know, solids or blenders for the background. With Pam, she's got very small print, these little dots in her small pieces, but her bigger piece is where she's pulled in a little bit bigger design with those ladybugs. So those are some of my top fabric selection tips. And I am pressing these seams open. Now, you can press, I love nesting my seams, okay? I love it. But with this, there's a lot of bulk that's gonna be happening. And I just think I'm gonna be happier, I'm happier with mine with this by pressing them open. You can never go wrong with pressing your seams open. So I'm gonna keep pressing, because I want these nice and pressed. Any other questions while I'm pressing away, Miss Katie? Um, a follow-up to the stitch length. Um, do smaller stitches make more secure uh, seams? Well, you don't want it really big, is what I, my point is. So a really wide stitch is gonna be like a basting stitch, and it's really easy to pull it out. So a nice middle-of-the-road kind of stitch. Um, a really fine, fine, tight stitch might be for, like I mentioned, doing foundation paper piecing because there you're gonna have to actually tear that paper away after you've sewn it and you want those stitches to stay in place. So you want a medium to smallish stitch length. 
And you might want to check your machine's guidebook too. It may have a recommended setting for you, or, and it'll tell you what the default setting is on your machine too. What else have we got, Katie? I've got a little bit more pressing to do. Jeannie has the eight inch cube, but not the companion dies and wants to know if she'll be able to do this so alone. Yes, this does not use the companions. It uses the go mix and match cube with those eight original shapes. And then we are using the setting triangles. And if you don't have the setting triangles and you're using the eight size, then you can use the rotary cutting directions that we have for that eight inch size for those. And another cube question relating to that from Carol. Perfect. She just got the eight inch cube and wants to know if there's a way to make a 10 or a 12 inch block from the eight inch cube for this pattern. Not from this pattern, no. Now, can you make, is it possible to make a 10 inch cube, 10 inch block with an eight inch cube? Yes, because you have got units, your small units, your um, small square and half square triangles in your eight inch cube that finish to two inches. Now, I'm no mathematical genius, but two, four, six, eight, ten. 10. You put 10 of these across, if you did a, a 25 patch or any kind of a five by five grid with these, you could make a 10 inch block, but you will not be able to make this block because it is not, uh, the size shapes will not be the right size to make a 10 inch block for this pattern. I hope that makes sense. Okay, now we're ready to sew our rows together into a block, yay! And the one thing you'll wanna keep an eye on is again, you're gonna wanna keep an eye on this point right here, making sure that your seams are lined up. And I'm again gonna sew with my goose on top so that I can make sure I'm not cutting off this point. So I'm gonna move this to the machine. And Katie, if we've got more questions, we do. Patricia is wondering if you've ever cut silk using the Go Big. I haven't, but you certainly could. Um, I, silk tends to be slippery, so you might want to take extra measures like not cutting as many, even though it's very thin usually. Um, depending on the kind of silk you're using, if it's slippery, you might want to keep it in place with a little piece of painter's tape off on the side and not cut as many layers just so that you don't have to be concerned about any possible slippage. That would be my only concern. Basically, if you can cut it with your scissors, you can cut it with your dye quilters. Uh, Joanne wants to know with the cutting instructions, what are the size of the half square triangles with the center block she's doing rotary cutting? Um, off the top of my quilting head, I do not know. They, but you can check those blog posts and that will give you those sizes. Okay, now I'm gonna sew the bottom of this on, give it a press and I will have this block done. This goes together so quickly. I think that's why so many of you are jumping ahead and getting all of your blocks done because A, they're so pretty and gosh, everybody's got such gorgeous fabrics that they're using. And B, it, it's like popcorn or potato chips. You just don't wanna stop, right? You just wanna keep going and you wanna see what it's gonna look like. Okay. And I do use a quarter inch foot. Okay. Hey, here is a little, somebody said something about their pieces fitting together and I said to check your quarter inch seam allowance. That's something you always wanna do and I did notice in somebody's picture um, that they were having some issues with that. But if you wanna check your quarter inch seam or if you wanna measure anything when you're quilting, the one thing you don't wanna do is pick it up and go like this because you're not gonna get a true measurement. You wanna lay it down and then you wanna put your ruler on top of it. And that's gonna show you your true measurement. Tips, just little tips. 
Okay, I'm gonna set these seams and then I am going to, again, press these seams open. We have got several seams coming together, especially on these points, and I wanna make sure that they look really good. So that's why I'm gonna press them open. And while I do that, Katie, what, have, what are people asking? Well, we have a friend of ours watching the show and says hello from AQS Daytona. Can you <gasps> guess who that friend is? Is it Ms. Pam? It is. <laughs> hello, Ms. Pam. I mean, it's been like 24 hours since I've seen her. <laughs> it hasn't been that long since we've talked, but we were texting late last night. <laughs> we really do share a brain. Well, they must have gotten it up in the lounge then, Katie. Yes. They've got fun things planned there. They do. And we have a retailer that has the product in a booth there as well. And I think Pam maybe is gonna be in the booth some. And I know that one of our go-getters, Chris, that was on our show recently is gonna be there too. Okay, so there we go. And my, I really focused to try and make sure I didn't cut off my little points there and I get them all pressed out. Bottom line, we're gonna quilt this, right? Then we're gonna wash it and it's gonna get all nice and crinkly. And uh, one of Chris's tips that he shared with us is, even if it's not perfect, make sure you finish it because by the time you wash it and all, it's gonna be fine and you don't want it just sitting there. You spent too much time on it. So I have got a couple of blocks made and I'll have to go home and finish. You just keep chain piecing and get those together. So let's move on and do our quarter square triangle blocks. So this is what mine look like. Again, this is what Pam's are like. She's using that uh, ladybug fabric and a white on white print for her background. So now is when, now is the moment you all have been waiting for. We're gonna get out the ghost setting triangle die. All right, where did I put it? Katie, any more questions? Or are we just waiting with bated um, breath until we start on our setting triangles? Jonelle wants to know, um, do you tend to sew on the side with the seams up or on the flat fabric? I guess I'm gonna say it depends on what I'm sewing, which is not the answer you're looking for, but it's the best that I can do because I do kind of trade off depending on what I'm doing. I'm gonna move this out of our way for a minute. We'll need it back, but I'm gonna get it out of the way for right now so we can really focus. Joanne H has a good question that I think we see fairly okay. often that I wanna ask, and she wants to know, how do I know what size setting triangle I need for my blocks? That is a great question. So if we measure our blocks right here, here's Pam's, this is an eight and a half, it's right now gonna measure eight and a half by eight and a half. We'll call this an eight inch finish because when we sew it into our project, it's gonna finish at eight by eight. We're gonna need eight by eight setting triangles, eight inch finish setting triangles therefore to f match up with it. So same. Eight inch cube, if you're making eight inch blocks, you're gonna need eight inch setting triangles. Eight inch cube, if you make a 10 inch block, like we talked about earlier, you'd actually need the 10 inch setting triangles. So it's all gonna be based on the size of your block. Okay. Okay, now we're gonna use this corner piece. Our, sides, our setting triangles have two pieces on them. They have side setting triangles and they have a corner setting triangle. And this is actually, there are two on this die board. It varies depending on which size it is, how many side shapes you have, anywhere from one to four. And it varies on whether it's a 10 by 24, like this is, eight and up are on 10 by 24 inch boards and six five and four are gonna be on six by 24 inch board. So those are ones that again, will fit through any cutter, including the Gomi. So we're just gonna be using this one. And although we say this is for the corner, we're actually gonna use it as a quarter square triangle. Now, this pattern was designed by Marjorie Busby. She's got a great cutting tip for you to really maximize your fabric for this. So you wanna take a look at that. 
It starts by cutting a seven and three quarter inch width of fabric strip. And I conveniently happen to have a couple here. So here is one for my background. Here is one for my yellow, which is my highlight color. So she's going to say to take, to make the most of your fabric, they say to fold the strip like you would a flag and then press those folds in. Darn it, I need my, all right, hold please. I've got to have all the things ready here. Okay, because I actually did this just how the pattern said. It works really well. Yes, I did test it. So here's my, here's my width of fabric strip with the yellow. Now I went ahead and cut off the selvage edge because A, I saved them and B, we're gonna cut it off anyway. So when she says to take it and fold it like a flag, this is what we're gonna do. Again, these are my, this is my fold over here. These are my open edges right here. I'm gonna take this corner and fold it over just like this to make a triangle shape. Now the directions say to go ahead and press this out and I'm actually gonna do that because then I don't have to worry about it. I hate to be worrying. So don't panic, we'll go over this again. This is one of those trust, trust moments. You gotta trust me that this is gonna work cool. Now we press that out. Now I'm gonna fold it over just like that. I'm gonna press it again. Now, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six layers of fabric. So I'm gonna hold, okay? I am gonna push this over the top. It's going to hang down. So I am just gonna rough cut at the edge of this because I'm gonna use this fabric still. I love my fabric, we all love our fabric. We don't wanna waste a bit and I've got more shapes to cut. Cause I'm gonna need eight and this pass is gonna give me six. So I'm gonna go ahead and just grab my little ruler. I love, by the way, I love our six by 12 inch ruler. Katie, do you have one of these? I have the larger one. The six this, by 24. You, you need to get yourself a six by 12 because it's super handy for little things like this. New rotary blades are handy too. Okay, so I'm gonna put this aside. So many things. And now I've got this up here and it's gonna fit right over. See how it's just covering my shape? It's perfect. It's gonna be just that quarter inch round on all sides. I'm gonna put my mat on it and I'm gonna cut. So again, let's go back. I'm gonna show you one more time how I folded that. I did that first fold. I took the corner and folded it down like I'm making a paper airplane. And then I folded it over. I pressed those seams in and I rough cut the seam. Now, we're playing a little loose with our, with our lengthwise grain on this. And you may ask, am I worried? And I'm gonna be careful with sewing, but I'm not worried because this block is not on the outside of my pattern. It's gonna be surrounded by other blocks to secure it. So. Erica, we had a couple questions on what you do with the selvage edges that you cut off. Um, <laughs> I wait for something to strike me. I've used them on shows before. I use them to make a Mill and Stars block. So if you're familiar with our Mill and Stars, it's got kind of a kite shape. Oh my goodness. Let's... There is so much static here in the studio. I think that we have, I need to spritz moisture in this studio so that we get rid of static. Okay. Okay. 
I'm gonna dispel some of that. Now, as always, you've seen me do it before. I'm gonna slide, not lift, because, oh, you can hear it crackle. Yeah. Regarding that static, Erica, are there any tips on how to cut down on the static outside you know, of sliding the You know, it's gonna create static as it goes through the cutter. Um, it, it's just like any part of your home if you're trying to get more humidity into your home. Now, I have seen quilters use a dryer sheet and just kind of like rub a dryer sheet over your mat and, and your, your mat and your, your dye. It's not gonna hurt anything. Not cut it with your dye, just rub it over and it's that fabric softener, you know. Um, I haven't tried static guard. I suppose you could, but I would, I'd do that maybe on the mat. I don't know that I'd do that on the dye. Yeah. Okay, so here are six of those. I only need two for this one. But this piece then would go back on. I could cut the last two that I need and be all ready to go on my die. Here, we'll just lay it out there. Again, it's gonna lay out perfectly. I only need eight. That would give all of those out of one seven by three quarter inch with a fabric strip. Awesome way to conserve your fabric. All right, and I have some blue ones, I think that I cut earlier. Now, where did I put them? Okay. Those are side ones. That was me moving ahead. Here they are. Okay. See, I take pictures of things, so I have to do steps ahead to take pictures of them, and I have to back up and do things, and I just get all of my pieces everywhere. Okay, so this is what we're going for. This is a quarter square triangle. Now the only trick with quarter square triangles is making sure you keep them facing the right direction and that you keep your, op your colors on opposite sides. So you wanna make sure with quarter square triangles, your long edge is actually on the outside. It's the trick with that. And we're gonna sew these two together and these two together, and then we're gonna put them together. And again, we take those dog ears off, so when I line these up, oh look, it's just picture perfect. It's gonna go straight down there. We've built in that quarter inch seam allowance. It's a thing of beauty. All right, I'm gonna chain piece, Katie. How many questions do we have? We have a few. So if they're using a different size other than the eight inch and they don't own a setting triangle die, how would they get their setting triangles? So this involves math. You need to cut a square that is, okay, I am relying on my memory now, one and a quarter inch larger than the finished square that you are making. So if you are needing to make quarter square triangles to make a 12 inch finished quarter square block. So if you're trying to make this block at 12 inches, you would take 12, which is your finished size, add an inch and a quarter, which would make that 13 and a quarter inches and cut those squares that size then cut from corner to corner. Then you're gonna sew your pieces together and you will have the additional step then of going back and trimming off the dog ears. And on a follow up with the setting triangles on this one. Okay. Um, Colleen accidentally cut the side triangles incorrectly and with the stretchy side on the large outer side. So she wants to know if she can use that for her corner triangle if she turns the fabric the right way and so she doesn't waste it. You know what, use your, you, can, you can still use those on this project. And the reason why is this is a pretty forgiving project. If you look at the one behind me or the one behind Katie, you'll see that we've got a border that goes around on the outside edge. That border will stabilize that stretchy edge on the outside for you. So you're just gonna wanna be really careful with it because the tendency when you sew is to stretch the fabric and you just have to kind of fight that and be really super careful. 
if you're ever sewing with something, you have to cut against the grain and it's wonky and you're having issues. You can also utilize a fusible interfacing, a real thin one on that outside edge on the back side to stabilize it. Okay, now I am going to press these towards the blue because here I've just got big pieces and it's gonna be just fine for me to do that. And I'm gonna show you how to nest that seam and I'm gonna show you how to press it open. Okay, Katie, how are we doing? If you cut off the selvage, how do you determine lengthwise versus crosswise grain? Great, do you know the answer to that? There's a stretch test, I know There's that much. There's a stretch <laughs> test. Okay, Katie is gonna, hold on just a minute. I'm not sick. It's the allergy thing. Okay, so here's a strip, stretch of fabric. I happen to know I cut a width of fabric, so I know that this is the width of fabric. If I go like this, I can see there's not a lot of, not a lot of give. If I go like this, it's got some give. Can you see that? That's your crosswise grain. Of course, if I go like this, corner to corner, that's the bias and that's the most. So just give it a stretch and you can also hear sometimes. Pam, Pam says she can hear, I do better with my eyeballs. So tight, looser. That's how you tell. Lengthwise grain is always gonna be that tight part. And if it helps you to leave your selvage on, leave your selvage on. There is no quilting police. You do whatever is gonna work really well for you. And you do not have to save your selvages. Pam certainly doesn't save her, she thinks I'm nuts. But you can use them. I've seen people, I've used them for pin cushions. I've also seen people make, use them for bags. I've seen people at, at even use them for like garments by sewing them together to make it's kind of like string quilting and you're sewing together all of them to make another piece of fabric that then you can cut out in another shape. Okay, we're pressed. Now again, this is how we're gonna go together. So we've got opposite colors on opposite sides. So because we've pressed to the blue, I can put this together and here's the moment of truth. Here's the happy. I now have that little, I've created kind of a little ridge and those will just go right together and I can nest them together. That's gonna keep that center point picture perfect. And if you're really um, concerned about it, you can even put a pin in there, but you don't need to. So now I'm gonna sew this one together and show you how to press it open. And while I do that, Katie, do we have anybody asking more questions? We do. Uh, Robin wants to know, will binding stabilize your quilt? Yes, but um, if you end up with something towards the outside that is really stretchy, I think you're gonna be a little happier with your result if you even put a little narrow border on it. But yes, to an extent it will. If you are not careful though, the damage will have already been done before you get to that stage as far as having it stretch out of alignment. Um, and then if you cut paper with your dies, will it dull the blades? No, no. I mean, if all you do is ever cut paper with it, it might eventually. I've never cut that much paper with any of mine to know, but you know what? It's your die. Use it the way you want to. Put it to work for you the way you want to use it. And our blades really do not dull because they're not metal on metal. Cutting an occasional piece of cardstock or even that acetate to fussy cut or whatever is not gonna hurt your dies. Okay, I set my seam. Now here's the moment. This is, I'm gonna, I want those last couple of seams, those first couple of stitches to open up. And I, let's do that again. So those, and usually you can just kind of open it up. See how I did that? Now I can press this direction 
just like that. And what that does is spread that bulk out from the point so that it's going to lay nice and flat. Look at that. Look how flat that is. And I kind of like to admire my work, so I'll turn it over and go over this side of it too and look at it and go, oh, isn't that pretty? And there we go. Now you only need four pieces like this, and then we're done for this week. You've got all your steps done. You've got nine star blocks and four of these, <coughs> excuse me, quarter inch triangle blocks, quarter square triangle blocks, excuse me, and your work for this week is done. Katie, do we have more questions? I'm gonna start laying some blocks out because I can't stand it. I think we have some folks that are wanting to work ahead, so we have a couple questions on the side setting triangles. Okay. So for those with the width of fabric, does that run parallel to the side of the die with the label? For your width of fabric, and we've got a little, we put a little note in a little later in the show, y'all are jumping ahead a little bit, but we did recently make a correction on the pattern itself and how you lay it out. So, you will want, if you've already downloaded your pattern, I'm going to suggest since, like, last night, I'm going to suggest that you go ahead and download a fresh copy of it, and here's why. Um, to keep your lengthwise grain, the tight part of your fabric, falling along this lengthwise blade, and I have, I happen to have mine cut already. Although the selvage is off of it. You're gonna take your ruler and measure a quarter inch on either side. And that measurement is now in the directions. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, Katie. <coughs> Sorry about that. I think, oh gosh, I can't remember, so I'll grab a ruler. This is why they keep all the rulers next to me when I'm doing this. Okay, uh, 18 and a half, it looks like, if I'm, I'm guessing it's 18 and a half. Or is it 18 and three quarters? I can't tell, 18 and a half. It's not as easy to do this while you're standing up and no longer watching. So. Cut your width of fabric like that. Now, these triangles are not directional, so you can fan fold. So next week, you'll see us take this lengthwise grain, the tie, again, the tight part, line it up, and we certainly can then fan fold back and forth over our shape. But that's only if you're looking ahead. So if you're looking ahead and you wanna get started, download those fresh directions with the new revised cutting directions. If you can't stand it, and you've got to put your shapes together. Or you can wait for us next week. Okay, I think I've got another block here. Blocks, blocks, blocks. So let's take a look at what we've created here. Remember, we've got these going on point. And we're going to talk about design walls and things like that next week. And finishing off our rows, all of that good stuff. But here's just a sneak peek, right? Because you know you want to look, right? You know you want to see. Let's see, I need this to go this way. So you can see we're building this out. And you start to see it take shape for us. Oh, that's a lot of work. We did a lot of work today. Katie, if anybody wants to, how can they rewatch the show? Uh, you can find our shows on all of our platforms on Facebook, YouTube, and uh, our website as well under the video gallery under Learn. That's right. And then they're, they are also available on the AccuQuilt, or AQS Quilting Parade show. Yes. 
Yes, absolutely. So if you haven't yet, be sure you do join that group and be sure you post your pictures with the hashtag AQSOS. Now, we're gonna have some pictures of some of your blocks that are posted this week on next week's show. So we are having so much fun partnering with AQS, doing this. This is our first of five quilt alongs for this year, Katie. Yes. So you may be back here in the studio with me again. You never know. Maybe I might be here next week. <laughs> like next week. <laughs> so for more tips and tricks on today's steps, be sure to check out today's AccuQuilt blog post and there'll be pictures in there as well. Now, along with today's post, there's the introduction, of course, to the Quilt Along series that was called Join the 2023 AQS and Accu Quilt Along series. The blog is where you'll find those rotary cutting directions for the 8 inch finish size if you're not using a go cutter. I also wrote a blog post for part one, and we'll have more posts available with each episode. So be sure you subscribe to the Accu Quilt blog and the AQS blog as well, so you don't miss any of either of our trips, tips, or tutorials. Now, before we end part two of our quilt along for Stars in the Crown today, we need to announce today's winner of the giveaway, right? And I have the winner right here. Oh, well, look at that. The lucky winner of $100 in AccuQuilt reward points is, drum roll please. Sharon G. of Bathurst, New Brunswick, Canada. Congratulations. Oh, that's great. Maybe she gets seven triangles. Maybe. I feel like I'd rather do that than the math anyway. Yes. <laughs> Every day, all day long. Every day. It's just easier that way. Now, don't forget, we do have, speaking of that, plenty of special offers available for you on our website. To get your order in, open a new tab on your browser, type in accuquilt.com slash party, You'll see the current deals and place your order. Now, again, if you don't already have a go cover cutter, now is a great time to jump in and get one to help you finish off your project. If you're making the eight inch cube version and just getting started with go, your very best value is gonna be to jump in and get our Ready, Set, Go Ultimate Fabric Cutting Solution. That includes everything you need to make this project except your fabric and the go setting triangles eight inch finish die. Now you can find these at AccuQuilt.com or from your local AccuQuilt retailer. All right, Katie, it is time for us to get ready for the next show and I need to finish all my steps from today and finish putting my star blocks together. We hope today's show was just what you needed to help you complete this section of your Go Stars in the Crown throw quilt. See you next time. Thanks so much for watching. To learn more about your quilting craft, be sure to follow us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel for live events every Tuesday and Wednesday. You can check out the events page on the AccuQuilt website for more details on upcoming shows. And if you're looking for even more inspiration, visit our blog for exclusive tutorials filled with tips and tricks. And remember at AccuQuilt, we help you cut time so you can quilt more. Check out our event page to register for upcoming events. Registering for each event means you are entered to win a door prize that we'll give away during the show. Be sure to join Pam every Wednesday at 12 noon central time for AccuQuilt Live. There's always plenty of fun during these shows. Next time I'll be joining Pam to start assembling the Go Stars in the Crown quilt top. And join us every Tuesday at 12 noon central for launch parties and trunk shows. These events are filled with more tips, tricks, and inspiration. Next time, we'll be sharing plenty of green projects to help you get ready for St. Patrick's Day in spring. We're excited to see you there.